What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Darren. I am the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. My channel focuses primarily on fragrances, but we also throw some fashion tips in here as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I always uh, leave an open invitation for you to go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you don't mind, take another few seconds to hit the bell icon as well, just to ensure that when I drop new content on the channel, you get notified. As of late, I had a few people comment on some of my videos and I had a few people say things like, uh, man, you don't ever wear a bow tie or stuff like uh, uh, you don't ever do any type of fashion related content. And uh, my response, well, I was going to respond and then I'm like, hmm, this person doesn't watch my content. <sighs> Yikes. So I don't know how it makes me feel, but anyway, and I think about it and I'm like, well, they hopefully they go and click on maybe one or two other videos then that question will be answered. So, yeah. And speaking about fashion, today I am wearing a suit by Spear and McKay, one of my favorite suits. It's a wool suit uh, from Spear and McKay as a tie and pocket square is from Rioni. And the shirt as well is Spear and McKay. So I have people ask me about that all the time. So again, just really quickly, just want to give you guys a quick fashion check on um, what I'm wearing today. So I always have the links down below if you guys want to check out uh, Spear and McKay. It's a magnificent company, honestly, if you're looking to get any type of menswear. So guys, on today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 of my favorite fragrances or my top 10 fragrances from the house of Amboise. And man, you guys are in for a treat. Um, as of late, this is a house I've been really delving further into. And man, this is one of the hardest top 10 uh, fragrance list I've ever had to try to compile because the middle of this thing is so close and so muddled uh, I go back and forth uh, honestly up until this morning you know uh, I've been I was going back and forth with a hey, what spot would I actually put this fragrance in I have a total of three six nine twelve of uh, 14 fragrances from I'm um, and honestly you know the the top four and then my last three so everything else in the middle of that is just, I mean, we're tenths of a point off if I were rating these on a scale of one to 10. So this was really, really hard. Um, I, I love all the fragrances that I have from this house. So you're in for a treat. Again, I'm gonna be talking about my top 10 fragrances from the house of I'm Wise. If you are looking for quality niche perfumery, I'm Wise is a house that you need to take a look at. So if you guys wanna hear what my top 10 fragrances are from the house of I'm Wise, you know how we get down. Keep it locked right here. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in, man. Let's go ahead and jump into this video. The House of Amwaj, created in the year of 1983, as for the Sultan of Oman, is considered the gift of kings, and that it is. These fragrances are very, very well-crafted, luxurious fragrances, and again, I think Amwaj represents, is one of the fragrance houses that really represents the brand or the genre of niche perfumery to the utmost. This is like one of the, uh, my opinion, one of the paramount, one of the pinnacles of niche perfumery. And that's because the fragrances are very well crafted. The fragrances are very, very unique and they are very, very high quality. To me, really three characteristics that I think should really, really be associated with any niche brand of uh, fragrance. So that's really what they represent. And again, it is sincerely a gift of kings. So as I said in the opening, we're gonna be going through my, really the top 10, I'm gonna highlight the top 10, but I have 14 fragrances. I will give them all, I will mention all of them because I think they all are worth mentioning. None of these fragrances, I will say this, uh, well, maybe with the exception of one, um, I would say are really in the love category for me. So again, it was really, really hard to put these in order. Um, by the way, guys, before we get into the top 10 as well, I do wanna mention my sponsor for today is Twisted Lily. Now, if you've never heard of this, uh, this particular uh, website, Twisted Lily is a fragrance boutique and apothecary online, so you want to go and check them out. All the fragrances that I'm gonna mention on this list today, you can actually purchase from Twisted Lily. In addition to that, 
you don't have to really invest in a full bottle because they do decants of these fragrances as well. I think it's only one size, but for $5, you can really get a sample of any of these Amwash fragrances that I'm going to talk about today. So, you know, go over there and check it out. If any of these fragrances from my description you find to be interesting, go over to Twisted Lily and give them a try. I do recommend you sampling a lot of these fragrances from Amwash because about half of them are really an acquired taste that you really would want to sample first before you invest into a full bottle because these are not cheap fragrances. Most of them in the uh, 3.4 ounce size that I have tell anywhere between that $300 to $350 range. So definitely sample these fragrances before you buy unless you just know it's something that you like or you've been looking for. But again, you can get those at Twisted Lily and I do have a 10% off discount code for my guys which is Bowtie 10. I will leave all the information down below in the description box. So head over to Twisted Lily and check out some of these fragrances from Amwise. All right, guys, first up on this list today, this fragrance I want to mention. If there is one out of the 14 that I have that's a little bit more challenging that I think probably 50-50% of people would like it, 50% would not like it, it's the first one. And this one is called Figment Man. This one is called Figment Man. Now, the bottle is absolutely gorgeous on Figment Man. And I will honestly tell you, I read some reviews on this fragrance and honestly, uh, it was one that I probably wouldn't have tried, but I found an amazing deal. Uh, somebody was selling this fragrance and I found an amazing deal on it and I could not pass it up. Wanted to get it and give it a try because I do want to find some fragrances that do challenge me, challenge my nose, and this is one that definitely challenges my nose. This is not by any means a mass appealing fragrance, and pretty much everybody that I've had smell it so far has been 50-50. 50% of people say get this completely away from me, and 50% of the people just find something very intriguing about it. It's skanky, it's animalic, but there's something about it that keeps bringing me back to it. There's a a very uh, small citrus undertone to this fragrance underneath all of the skank that you get from it but this is very earthy very soily uh, again very animalic but again there's some citrus notes in here like lemon there's a few others that that give this fragrance a little bit of freshness and it's just very very intriguing to me but again this is not one that most people would probably like it is definitely a niche perfume and it's artistic but again, just not one that most people are probably gonna to gravitate towards. But, so if I'm putting these in order, this will be my least favorite, but it is something that I really find intriguing about it from Amwise. This one is called Figment Man. All right, the next fragrance that I wanna to talk to you guys about, this comes from the, there were three fragrances that came in the Midnight Flower Collection. And uh, this is the first one that I will mention on the list today. This one is called Bracken Man. Bracken Man. Now this is Amwaj's take <clears throat> on a fougere fragrance, but it's done in Amwaj fashion because it is very, very green and very, very earthy. Just like I mentioned with Figment Man, there's a very earthy, soily component to the fragrance. I would akin that or liken that to the use of patchouli in this fragrance. But again, imagine a green, very kind of aromatic fougere kind of scent with a very earthy undertone to it. Again, which I think is coming from patchouli in this fragrance, but it is, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. Again, guys, there's not really a fragrance on this list that I don't really like. Um, everything on this list is a high like to an absolute love, but if I had to put them in order, I had to leave this one just outside of the top 10 because again, it's really, really hard. But um, this one is called Bracken Man. If you like a fougere scent, this is one that I think you wanna take a look at. All right, the next fragrance on the list that's just outside of the top 10 is this one right here, and this one is called Memoir Man. Memoir Man. This fragrance is crazy to me, man, and I, I, I did a post on uh, Instagram about this one, and uh, one of my, uh, a guy that I really respect, his opinion on fragrances as well, one of my uh, followers that I follow on Instagram as well, he said this is the perfect, perfect uh, juxtaposition of a fragrance that is, is not always the one that you want to reach for in your collection, but it's so good. It's so good. 
and it's one that really gets a lot of compliments. It's, this is such a weird fragrance to me because it's like, it opens up, it's very minty, and there's this kind of weird sweetness that's coming into play in the opening with the mint. So it's really, really spicy and minty and green and herbal in the opening, and that sweetness combined with that red mint is really just something that's different. This is a fragrance, man, if you really want to find something that's going to challenge your nose and make you appreciate what a niche fragrance is all about, this is it. But it's so, the opening is, is what throws some people off of this fragrance. The dry down is beautiful. It has leather, and it really becomes a lot about sandalwood in this fragrance, which is crazy when you look at the notes and how it opens up. Um, but, but man, this is just one you have to put your nose on. Again, this one is not gonna be for everybody, but a true niche perfume lover would love this stuff. This fragrance is crazy to me because it goes sometimes from being right outside my top 10 to being in my top five, really depending on how I'm feeling. But just check this one out. Definitely sample it first. This one is called Memoir Man. So guys, now we're gonna jump right into the top 10. Coming in at the 10th spot, this fragrance is called Sunshine Man. Sunshine Man. Now guys, keep in mind again, from this spot, from the 10th spot, really starting with Memoir Man. From Memoir Man, on up into the number five fragrance on this list, I could really go and interchange these fragrances out because they're so close, they're so good. But the 10th spot right now would go to Sunshine Man. And what this one really about to me is the brandy. There's an orange brandy accord in this. Lavender and the star player here is an immortelle note, which is a really weird floral note. It almost gives like a a baked bread type of feel to a fragrance, which is very, very unique, very unique fragrance. Again, I talk about Amwaj and I talk about the fact that it's such a unique uh, fragrance house. It's so unique as far as the offerings that they have in this collection of fragrances. And this is one that is so unique. They're so intriguing, so alluring. Uh, they're so complex that they keep you coming back because it's something you pick up. Uh, different every time you wear one of these fragrances. These fragrances are wearing experience. Again, an olfactory, an olfactory journey that I think everybody should experience that truly loves uh, fragrances and perfume. Um, but again, I guess I will put this at the 10th spot sometimes because it's not, I don't really find as many occasions that, at, that I wear this fragrance or that I want to reach for it as much. So I guess right now that's my justification for having it in the 10th spot, but it smells fantastic. Um, check this one out, guys. Again, this one is called Sunshine Man. All right, coming in at the ninth spot on this list, this fragrance to me is one of the most slept on fragrances from the entire house of Amouage, and this one is called Honor Man. Honor Man, uh, just like I am advising you guys to do, um, I discovered this fragrance via getting a sample, and I got the sample, and every time I would put it on when I would be going out, I kept coming back to my wrist and smelling it saying, I really, really like this fragrance. I think it doesn't get as much attention because it was one of the first fragrances I think that was released by the house of Amouage that really was not a signature type of Amouage fragrance. So you don't get the heavy incense, uh, frankincense and um, albinum and things of that nature that you're normally, people were normally accustomed to uh, with fragrances from the house of Amouage, but this one was a little bit more on the fresher side. Now it's very, very uh, peppery in the opening. Uh, may not be the biggest, uh, uh, a lot of folks may not be the biggest fan of, of peppery type fragrances that have that kind of opening, but very peppery, but it really goes to a very clean, gentlemanly kind of fragrance in the mid. It has uh, nutmeg in here. Uh, geranium really cleans this one up. Uh, nice musky vetiver tonka bean dried out, but I love this fragrance. Again, it's so close in the middle of this order of fragrances, but one that's definitely slept on from the House of Amouage. This one is called Honor Man. All right, guys, coming in at the A spot on this list, this is, <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the bottle. This is by far my favorite bottle from the house. This one is called Journey Man. This one is called Journey Man, and I love, like I said, the bottle, my favorite bottle. I guess this one is at number eight because this one 
Uh, just like I mentioned with Sunshine Man, I don't find as many occasions that I can wear this. This is kind of like a celebratory fragrance for me. Uh, uh, this one, Jubilation 25, the job promotions, uh, again, celebrating uh, different moments in life, different accolades. This is just a fragrance I like to reach for because it's such a fragrance just for me. Um, especially where I'm located geographically, many people don't respond well to this fragrance because to me, this is one of the more Middle Eastern smelling fragrances. It has tobacco in this, uh, tonka bean as well, and Sichuan pepper. So it's a really, really spicy, peppery, again, very oriental smelling uh, fragrance. But again, for me, when I read the note breakdown, I said I had to have it. I love the bottle and love the fragrance. Again, I just don't find as many occasions that I can wear this, but I love it nonetheless coming in at the A spot this one is called Journeyman. All right, coming in at the seventh spot on this list today, this fragrance is one of the newer acquisitions, but man, I love it. My second favorite bottle in my collection behind Journeyman, and this one is called Imitation Man. This one is called Imitation Man. Now, this one to me is really about a, it's a powdery rose fragrance. You have Turkish rose in here, um, you have Turkish, rose in here which you definitely pick up the rose but it's really 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 powdery at the same time and that's because this fragrance features notes of uh, violet leaves or violet which again is a very uh, floral note that's really powdery oftentimes where it's used in fragrances and it also has that oris uh, oris kind of smells like iris gives fragrances a very very powdery vibe so you get a very powdery rose fragrance now this is one definitely as well that i say you would want to sample uh, before you buy it because the bottle is gorgeous and the bottle alone again will make you want to purchase this fragrance check it out that gradient look goes from like a blue to like almost a violet or pinkish color as it goes down to the bottom but man this is and then it's green on the base it's a beautiful bottle um, again right behind journey man but it's one that again because not all guys really like powdery rosy type fragrances and that's what really what this is for the most part but then it drives down to a little bit more of a resinous kind of fragrance with some some myrrh in this there's some leather in this as well but gorgeous fragrance man this is another one for me that was jumping in and out of the top five again if you catch me a week from now it may be there but right now at the seventh spot this one is called imitation man and coming in at the sixth spot this fragrance i've talked about a lot on my channel and this one is called lyric man Lyric Man. Now this is the one fragrance, the initial fragrance that made me as a man really appreciate the note of rose. I just talked about the rose fragrance uh, imitation man, but this is a, a different rose. This is an incense rose, but it's fresh on the opening with the use of, uh, I think there's some lime in this. Ah, oh, yeah, man. Just a, just a gorgeous scent. Gorgeous scent. You do have to be a fan of rose, which you guys know I am. But man, this stuff is so good. And because of it, it's at the six spot, you know how good these next couple fragrances have to be, these next five. But So right now, today, I put it in the six spot. This one is called Lyric Man. All right, now coming in at the fifth spot, now this is a two four. This one is Interlude Man, the Blue Beast. Now I'm gonna show you this bottle. This is the original uh, Interlude Man, right? Now, I also have the new Interlude Black Iris. And I will tell you now, I like the new uh, Interlude Black Iris a little more than the original. Now, I just put them both at the same because they are, they are the same fragrance for the most part. But if it had been just, if I had been just basing it on the original Interlude, man, it probably would have been a little bit closer to the seventh, eighth spot on this list because one issue with this fragrance with that oregano note in the original interlude man it was a gift and a curse a gift because that's what made this fragrance so freaking unique um and 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 artistic in a way because they used the oregano on this which gave it a very very smoky smoky <laughs> smoky vibe uh in this fragrance and then it dried down to a nice sweet, slightly resinous fragrance, which is what people really came to enjoy and know this fragrance for. <clears throat> but it just wasn't that wearable. 
only in the very cold temperatures could you get away with wearing um, interlude man in my opinion and so it just wasn't a versatile scent and then came this one black iris and as the name indicates it has a very very strong iris note so they took the um, oregano note out and added iris to the composition now there's a few other subtle differences as well but to me that made this fragrance dna even more wearable if the oregano was challenging for you they took that out and replaced it with a powdery iris note and it works well it is not feminine at all because of course you know this guys with this fragrance it is uh, a laundry list of notes that really make this a very smoky incensey masculine fragrance and that's that vibe is still present but again with the iris being in place of the oregano i just think that took this scent dna to me to the next level even more wearable i love this stuff so it comes in at the fifth spot Inter interlude man black iris or the original interlude man all right guys coming in at the fourth spot i just did a full review on this fragrance if you have not seen it i will link it down below this fragrance is called beach up man beach up man and i just can't get enough of this fragrance it's a beautiful mint minty green herbal fragrance that can be worn in the summertime and it's just so refreshing uh, this fragrance and like I said it's something that makes it very very unique for a summer fragrance This thing lasts all day long on my skin. I'm talking 10 plus hours of performance and so You know again, it's a newer acquisition But it's one that for me and the type of fragrance that I like to wear pairs very very well with the suit uh, Again very you can dress it up dress it down, but I love this stuff You have to be a fan of mint to like this, but I love it. It's minty fresh, kind of soapy and clean. Perfect fragrance to wear in the summertime from I'm Wise. Again, this one is called Beach Up Man. Now coming in at the third spot, this fragrance right now is currently, of all the fragrances from I'm Wise, this one is, is really blowing my mind. Uh, again, criminally underrated fragrance from the house of I'm Wise in the third spot. This is called Dia Man. This one is called Dia Man. And listen, I, I don't know. I, I, well, I have my, my theory. I think this one is kind of overlooked because of all the fragrances from the House of I'm Watch, even with the likes of Honor Man, this is the most unlike I'm Watch type fragrance from all the offerings that I put my nose on. A lot of folks talk about how wearable Reflection Man is, which it is, but I think this is just as wearable as Reflection Man. The main note here in the star player is a peony note. And peony is a floral that may give you almost a rosy type vibe, but it's not as, as uh, prominent as rose as you find in most fragrances. It's lighter, beautiful floral. And again, that's just not typical of Amouage. And I think that turns some people off that were huge fans of this fragrance brand because it was so different. It's a soft floral fragrance. And in addition to that, maybe because the performance is not quite like all Amouage fragrances. Now, I will tell you, I still get a great solid eight hours of performance out of this one. But when you talk about Amouage, a lot of times folks are used to be smoke nine, ten plus hours. This one does things a little bit different, soft, and it has a beautiful succulent plum note in the middle of this. This is so good. I dare to have almost put this number one. But because it is not as seasoned in my collection as my top two, I want to make sure that this is an absolute love affair and just not an infatuation. But for right now, we'll give it the third spot. But I will tell you, don't be surprised in the next year if this is my number one. This is a gorgeous scent. Put your nose on this one. Please put your nose on this one. This is called Dear Man. All right, guys, coming in at the number two spot, this fragrance definitely needs no introduction. If the Gift of Kings had a face, this is what it would probably look like. This is Jubilation 25. Jubilation 25, this is a true Gift of Kings. Now this thing has a note breakdown that is longer than an encyclopedia, so I don't want to get all into that, but uh, Orbanum uh, is a note in this. It has Opapanax, it has Immortel, honey and a very very prominent blackberry 
uh, note in this one as well, cinnamon, just to name a few. Gorgeous scent. You talk about niche perfumery and really uh, what I feel like niche perfumery should represent, uniqueness, creativity, performance, they are all of the things that you look for in a niche fragrance. This is it, right here in a bottle. I absolutely adore this fragrance. Another one that I reserve for celebratory type situations or if I'm dressed to impress and I just want to be the best smelling guy in the room and smell unique, I reach for this as well. But I love this. A true gift of kings coming in at number two spot. This is Jubilation 25. All right, guys, I'm coming in at number one. You guys know what it is. You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> so let's get it out of the way. This one is called Reflection Man. Reflection Man, the most wearable fragrance from the House of Amouage. Stuff just smells absolutely divine. Jasmine, Neroli, Sandalwood. Stuff is gorgeous, man. It's number one for a reason. One of the most popular fragrances from the brand. The one fragrance that I would say, uh, now with the exception of this and maybe Dia Man, is just easy to wear, potentially blind by worthy. Because it's really, really hard not to like this scent DNA, in my humble opinion, man. But it's definitely deserving of the number one spot from the House of Amouage, and this one is called Reflection Man. All right, guys, that's it. That's my time. I hope you enjoyed this video today that as I went through my Amouage collection and really highlighted my top 10 fragrances from the House of Amouage, as always, I appreciate your time and attention to these videos because, of course, you could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're right here with me, and I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and share these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information or potentially find me entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren, the Voltaire Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Peace.